Consider supporting this channel for as little as $5 a month on Patreon. You can also commission future content for this game. Link is in the description. You can also send a one-time donation of any amount to this channel using PayPal. Link is in the description. After experimenting with the textures on my fictional American bullet train, I finally discovered how to make very reflective textures for trains 2019. So here's a tutorial on how to do that. First, you open something as a layer, and this is going to be the first of four layers for the parameter texture. This is the texture for the door on the side of the train. I want the wording to look like it's backlit so that it lights up at night, so I'm going to paint those parts of the texture white. Because on the RGB alpha type texture, the red channel is emissive, so anything that's white on this channel will be glowing in the dark, and anything that's black will not glow in the dark. As you might have guessed, it is in fact possible to have some parts of a texture glow in the dark and other parts not. The rest of the door I do not want glowing in the dark, so the rest will just be painted black for this channel on the parameter texture. After painting the lettering white, I'm going to paint the rest of the door black because I do not want it to light up at night. After painting most of the texture, to save time, I'm going to go to Colors, Desaturate, Desaturate. This basically changes the remaining colors to either black, white, or gray. Then I'm going to go to Curves and darken it. The white parts will remain white. And now only the letters are white and everything else is black. Those parts will not glow in the dark, but the white parts will glow in the dark. The green channel is roughness. To this day, I'm still not entirely sure what it means, but I'm going to open another texture as a layer, which is a, another copy of the same one. Then we're going to go to desaturate, uh, colors to gray. Now, one thing I have noticed with parameter textures is the darker the roughness channel is, the more reflective the texture will be, and the brighter it is, the less reflective it'll be. I have no idea why that happens, but since I want the texture to be reflective, I'm going to darken the roughness channel. Believe it or not, this will make the texture really reflective. Now I'm going to open another copy of the exact same texture as a layer. This is going to be for the blue channel, which is ambient occlusion. Now with ambient occlusion, the brighter the texture is, the brighter it'll be when light shines on it, and the darker it is, the darker it'll appear when sunlight shines on it. Or at least that's what seems to happen. I'm still not entirely sure what specifically ambient occlusion does. Now we're going to open yet another copy of the exact same texture as a layer for the alpha channel. The alpha channel is metallic. As it turns out, the brighter the texture is, the more metallic it is, and the darker it is, the less metallic it is. Now, at first I thought how metallic it was is what determined how reflective it is, but apparently not. Apparently that is done by roughness. Now, I want the door to be made of metal, so I'm going to make this texture white. Now, I'm still not sure how much white, black, and gray is needed to achieve a specific type of metal. For example, if you were going for stainless steel versus aluminum versus, uh, say, cast iron or something like that. I'm still not sure what's required to achieve that. And I can't find any definitive answers online either. Okay, now we're going to go to Image, Mode, Grayscale, and then Colors, Components, wherever it is, they keep moving it, and Compose. Now we're going to click on the drop down menu and select RGBA and get this screen larger because for some reason it's never big enough. Anyway, I'm going to add the colors in the order that I placed them down. 
which isn't too bad because they're numbered and then just click OK the lettering is pink which means it'll glow in the dark and the rest of the texture is, are various shades of blue I've noticed that the darker the shade of blue the more reflective the end result will be but if you cross too far out of blue and into red or magenta the texture will start glowing in the dark so be very careful with that now it's time to get ready to export the file let's see I'm gonna save it to desktop for now to make it easier to find I'm gonna call it doors parameter my texture names are usually pretty simple they always tell you exactly which part of the train they're texturing the reason why I always name my textures this way is in case anyone wanted to reskin anything that I made because a lot of times I try to reskin something and the textures were always just a jumble of letters and numbers that didn't really tell me exactly which part of the train it was texturing so I couldn't figure out which one to edit for example I tried to make a fictional reskin of something I downloaded from jointed rail and I could not figure out how to texture it because the textures do not really explain which part of the train is being textured anyway as you can see the door is very reflective and so is the window texture I have also made the train more reflective using this method now I just need to figure out how to get two or more objects to light up in unison because this train is made out of two separate cubes so when the light shines on it it always shines on one side individually instead of shining on the entire side of the train I wish I could figure out how to do that because it's a similar issue as what I'm having with the AEM 7 where for some reason the Sun only shines on half of the mesh correctly and not the other half I also seem to get this problem every time I carve a hole in something to make a hole for a door or a window. By the way, make sure you set tile to ST on all the texture.txt files because if you leave it blank, while the texture will still appear, the reflections won't work. They only work if you have tile set to ST on all of the textures required. Now here's what it looks like in game. As you can see the sun very well reflects the textures on the train. Which is what I was going for because I wanted it to look like a very reflective metal. The door isn't as reflective here because that one was made before I figured out how to do that. This older texture looks like plastic, doesn't it? That's because back then I didn't know how to make it look more metallic, or at the very least reflective. And here is what the train looks like when it's facing directly in front of the sun. Very reflective. 
I must say. By the way, this game has a problem where sometimes textures that glow in the dark shine through textures that don't glow in the dark, and I still have no idea how to fix that. Hopefully it will be fixing an update. Now that I have a better understanding of how parameter textures work, it's time to update my lighthouses, the older ones specifically, because there are parts that should look metallic that don't, and other parts that shouldn't look metallic but do, like how reflective the sides of the lighthouse are. That's actually because I misunderstood what the alpha channel was supposed to do back then. And I also accidentally made the interior glow in the dark somehow. Don't really know how I did that. But probably a misunderstanding of what the um, emissive texture was supposed to do. I also recently found out about smooth shading, which makes cylinders look way better in this game. So that's also something that needs to be updated. This replica of the bald head lighthouse definitely needs to be fixed. It looks like it's made of cast iron or something. Which was not what I was going for. Because it's made of stucco. It used to be the color white, but the elements changed the color to brown. Here's another example of bad parameter textures. This brick lighthouse looks like it's made of cast iron again. Could you imagine cast iron bricks? Thanks for watching this video. In the next video, it'll either be about the AEM7 project or the American Bullet Train project. Depending on how long it takes for me to get a response on how to fix bad ambient occlusion baking. Whatever that even means. Anyway, thanks for watching this video and I'll see you next time.